that I mean that happened to her standing in for Marlon Brando. That was also 1973, something like that. Um, and it was a weird, it was a weird thing that happened at the Academy Awards, which even I was too young to re really remember. And I think I've watched it um, on YouTube. Um, but, you know, I could have give a rat's ass about Marlon Brando. And, you know, it was just a one of those weird sort of iconic moments and I didn't ever really give it much thought. But then when the Academy um, decided they were going to apologize to her, that was when I said, well, that's good. You know, that's that's appropriate because if she what what her story was that was that appearing that night on the Academy Awards ruined her career and any possibility of her having a career in Hollywood. So my reaction to it in 2022 was great you know they should apologize because she you know she lost her career and then reading this yesterday it was like oh well i don't feel sorry for you and you know that sucks really it's like it's like a 73 it's like a 50 year old dupe it's like a it's like a I'd say in the history books of pretendianism, this one's a doozy because it went on and it's famous. You know, that moment, 1973, I think is when it happened at the Oscars was famous. And and then um, the apology this year from the Academy was newsworthy. I mean, it made news. And I actually, <laughs> I'm teaching, I, so I teach in an American Indian Studies department now at the University of Minnesota. And I'm teaching an upper level undergraduate course this fall. And I have my students do something I call current event reports where, um, you know, I just have them come up and present on a current event that's happening that pertains to indigenous people. It can be anything. And my, one of my students this past Monday presented on the passing away of Sashin Littlefeather um, and then detailed the whole kind of like Academy. We actually watched the, the apology being read by the director of the Academy or whoever he is. And we had a whole conversation in class and I was like, I was like, Sashin Littlefeller is like a hero to our people. And then like just a few days later, this dropped. And I was like, no, because, you know, this is something maybe people don't talk about. I'm going to have to write about this. I feel like it's a thing that I don't really want to write about, but I'm going to now as kind of a matter of indigenous feminist pedagogy. But these days, being a native professor of indigenous content, you have to have an entire subsection and a subthread in your courses about ethnic fraud, even if you don't want to talk about it, because so many of the people who've author authored books, like important books in the field, or important historical fi figures like this person, um, I'm going to stop calling her by this name. It's a made up name. Um, her name is Marie, Marie Louise Cruz. Marie Louise Cruz. I'll just use Cruz. But People like Cruz, right, who was kind of a celebrity, kind of considered a hero for the movement um, at a time. I mean, this was just like a month into Wounded Knee when this thing happened at the Oscars, the Wounded Knee occupation um, in 1973. And so she's always been associated with AIM and she's always been associated with like militant kind of red power activism, you know, the kind of like heroes of our people. Kind and she of claimed things. to be at Alcatraz. Right. And this is what what, what was in the and article. Then she, and she wasn't. And like I, what I wondered is why no one came forward and said something. I, I, Alcatraz was a pretty tight group. It was not a huge number of people, and the people who were there the whole eighteen months. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I so I now have to like give people disclaimers. So my student just did a presentation on her. When we come back into class next week, they're doing their midterms this week, so we don't have class. I'm going to have to do an entire disclosure and guarantee it's going to take up like 30 minutes of class to have a conversation because some of my students are going to be like appalled, but then some of my students are going to be like, why does this happen? And then we're going to have to have a whole conversation. And this is now something I do in every single class I have to teach because this literally comes up. And also in indigenous feminist and, and like in gender and sexuality studies, there are a lot of ethnic frauds. 
And I'm trying to figure out why that is. I'm going to have to write about it and analyze it. But it's like, it's a serious thing. Like I said, I like, I have to now do, teach an entire unit on this on, when I'm in classes where this isn't the topic of conversation at all. And so I'm tired of having to do that extra work <laughs> as a professor. Cause like this, it's already hard, you know, it's already hard to teach native content, especially to non-native people. Um, but then this just makes it more complicated and it makes it more difficult. And it really actually pisses me off that people keep lying. And then I have to keep in the classroom with real live human beings. I'm the person who has to like explain this and to talk people through their shock, their disappointment and their pain about these things. And it, you know, it's just fucked up that an actual native woman has to do this on behalf of these like people who are lying about who they are. So I'm just letting people know that this is like a reality of my life because I teach this content and I'm a professor. <laughs>